Hi guys, welcome back to Modifix. My name is Dan and today we are modding. This intro has been shot in present time, so Merry Christmas everybody. I hope you had a good one and wishing you all a very happy new year 2021. Can't possibly get worse than 2020, so it won't be too hard, we hope. Yeah, in this video, we're going to cover the tractor manifold, deal with that, and I'm fitting a brand new turbo actuator due to problems unforeseen, which I'll give you the detail on very shortly. Enjoy the video, guys. I've done about 30 miles in the car now, and it seems to have stopped smoking as much, which is really great news. I've also started running Castrol 1040 with the advice of my good friend and it seems to have done the trick so I'm gonna run boost on this car regardless if the engine does go bang or it starts smoking ridiculously or whatever else then we will cross that bridge when we come to it in terms of the manifold itself yeah I got this off the MRT owners club and I think it's homemade it's not a turbo kits one because the turbo kits one as far as I remember that flange there is in the middle or further over to this side, uh, which is really good. If you ever make a manifold, make it further over to this side, then you've got more space to play with on this side. Anyway, regardless, whoever made it, TIG welded there, and that's cracked here, right here, and all of that's cracked as well. And as you can see here, there's lots of pin holes in the weld. So I'm gonna have to, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to unbolt everything again. I'm gonna try and leave on as much as I can because I don't really wanna undo that and that. So what I'll do is I'll undo the V-band, undo that silicon there, water pipes, oil pipes, actuator off, and then take it over to a mate, get all these lines V'd out and uh, re-welded nice and solid. Righty ho, I've undone that from there and I've put in a nice little bonged piece to uh, keep the coolant in. Not that it was pissing out anyway, but it's fine. And then, this one here is bonged as well and I've pulled that one out. The reason I decided to do it that way is because this braided hose here, as you can see there, is probably like an AN8 and these hoses are more like sort of AN10, maybe 12 even, I think 12. Um, so what I had to do was sleeve that with some rubber, rubber hose and then jubilee it down and it's pretty watertight so I don't really want to disturb that so I'm going to leave that as it is and just disconnect those, so that's done anyway. I just gotta undo the manifold bolts now. It'll be interesting to see how this stuff holds on. Um, and then it should be lift off really. Um, whole thing should come out. So, wish me luck. Almost forgot about that little bugger there. I've just undone that. So now, manifold bolts, I wish I'd have lift off. Oh yeah, these two nuts say that went missing. That one and that one. I replaced them with two copper coated steel bolts again. And that one actually made a run for it again. So this time I've put mild steel nut on there and tightened the absolute crap out of that and it stayed. Anyway, take them all off. All the nuts are off now. And uh, look at this, still solid on there. So that red sealant is a beast. I'm gonna have to try and pry it off now with a screwdriver and see what happens. All right guys, and just like that, it's out and that's with the cross brace in place as well <laughs> i'm quite happy with the way i've built this saved me a lot of headache so i think now we've just got to get it welded up just wanted to say that red stuff is bloody brilliant i mean i'm gonna have to clean up the block again but that's minor i'll do that and um if you look at the gasket here i mean that stuff was well on there i mean there's no blow between the holes at all as you can see and the gasket's still very clean so i think i'm just going to clean it all off reseal it up and i'll put it back on and uh, back on that will go so that is now ready to be welded and ground and whatever i might just cover all this up and wrap it all nice so i don't get swarf everywhere oh and i just wanted to say that took me about 40 minutes absolute tops and that's whilst talking to you guys and taking video and blah 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 but I reckon that's probably a 20 minute job if you just got on it. All right guys, the manifold is back and it's got some monster welds on it now. I'm not really too bothered about it looking pretty. Bloody bird. 
I'm not too bothered about it looking super pretty. It looks all right. I mean, I've had it welded so it's strong at the end of the day. I'm not too bothered about how pretty it looks. And worst case, I'll just get a heat shield for it, a pretty one. So yeah, that's done, as you can see, nice and beefy now. I've also given it a coat of high temperature paint, just screw fixes on, no nonsense stuff. And it looks pretty good, to be honest. So yeah, just give that a few minutes and I'll whack it back on the car. Whilst I've got the actuator off, I wanted to actually test something because I've heard on the grapevine that these max peeding rod actuators only really sort of open the penny at about two bar or something ridiculous like that. So I thought I'd test it and the gauge is currently on. It's on about a bar, just under a bar. So let's see what that does to the actuator. Hardly. Now if I crank it up to two bar, About two bar now. So only at two bar do you see it shoot out to its full potential. So yeah, that actuator is gonna be now good. I think I might try and sort of modify it if I can. Or I have ordered a dual port Kinugua actuator, so we'll try that. But uh, I don't really want to wait that long, so I'll see if I can modify this actuator first. So uh, I guess the turbo is not going back on the car today. I'm going to have to wait until I can get a lower pressure wastegate actuator. Okay, so the actuator has arrived and it's actually a canoe, canoe, kigunawa. I don't quite know how to pronounce it, but anyway, it is one of those actuators and uh, it's not the Mamba one. I'm just going to get it out of the box and uh, show you what I got. So I've got, actually got two of these things, right? Um, I got one for the 200 sex as well because these are the twin port ones and they um, allow you to see so I've got two of them so that's what it actually looks like I've had it out of the box already once but it's the Kinugawa that's it Kinugawa it's got 0.8 bar spring it's got 0.5 bar spring 1.2 1.5 I think that's a 0.7 the other one but what I'm gonna do Oh, it's 1.7 bar, wow. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the 0.5 bar. So that should give me about 7.5 PSI. And then I can control the rest with the boost controller. So that's the plan. I did actually order this, which is a Saab 900, I believe. Um, and this would have fit, but the difference between delivery was about a week. And I thought for the sake of a week, I'll just wait for the proper one instead of doing the job twice. So. I'm going to just uh, assemble this and then I'll put it back on the turbo. Let me just show you what comes in the kit. Alright, so as you can see here, that's the uh, actual actuator itself, Allen key heads. And it's got a, like a thread in type rod, so it comes with varying rods as well, with different rod lengths. That's handy. I don't think I'm going to be using this because it's too, looks a bit fat for the penny that I've got. But I'll try it and see how we get on. So I think now I'll just install it and then I'll take you through what I did. Um, I'm going to have to open that hat to put the spring in anyway. All right, guys, I thought I might as well show you it with it cracked open. Um, I didn't actually expect there to be a spring inside, but the one bar spring is this one was actually inside it. And uh, that's coming out and the 0.5 bar there will be going in. What I forgot to mention also about this Saab turbo actuator is that this one is also running about a bar so it's not good for me. I just want to run about half bar and then control everything with the boost controller and I'm, I'm only going to be running about 10 psi, 11 maybe max so that will be plenty for me. So yeah as you can see there's a diaphragm, there's the metal lifter thing if you like in there and then there's a little brass bearing at the bottom and the rod threads through that and actually like threads into there and then the spring sits on that collar there and there and then you can you can rotate it so i'm gonna have to rotate this to actually suit the position of where i want my pipe to go all right looks like i did it totally wrong what you're supposed to do <laughs> is you're supposed to thread in the actuator rod and then you're supposed to clamp the rod down in the vise it's all lined up and it's fully pulled down and then you change everything over 
so I've done it a little bit wrong um, I'm trying to correct it now and hopefully it'll come out good alright guys so I've got that clamp down now and as you can see the diaphragm is all nice and flat in there in the hole and then you just put the cap on I've got full tension on it now so I've pulled the rod all the way down and then another thing to note is just the direction of this so initially I was just going to put it like that but then I checked against my uh, existing actuator on the bracket and as you can see here if you put the holes straight like that and then you look at that then it needs to be off to the right so I'm going to rotate it um, one bolt hole to the right like that. All right, and that's all assembled now. Um, just got to mount it in the bracket and make sure it sits right on the turbo. Quick thing to mention, probably stating the obvious here anyway for most of you, but always do opposites. So do that one, do that one lightly, and then tighten them up, and then those two, and then those two. Um, so you just get even clamping force. I thought I'd just do a quick test on this to make sure the actuator arm is extending fully. And look at that, the difference is massive. And that's only half a bar exactly perfect okay and just for comparison same pressure old actuator this is the uh, max speeding rods actuator yeah that you get on the 2871r right watch this hardly any movement all right guys the turbo is all assembled brackets on actuators on rods connected and what i thought is that I should test this before I put it on the car just to make sure that the flapper opens nice and closes nice and this actual connector if you like whatever you want to call it to the flapper was a little bit too thick so I've actually ground that down a little bit to get it to sit nice on there I did suspect it was too thick and, and it was and I've put a new little circlip on there but if you watch this flapper open and close now you will see that when it opens fully, there's a bit of a problem in that here, there's a shoulder, right? And the same on the bottom. And that shoulder is actually hitting the penny. So I think I'm gonna modify that and make it a little bit slanted that way. So it doesn't actually come in the way because I'm finding that when I, when the penny opens up totally, the flapper, then watch a little bit of disturbance at the end it slows down a little bit because it's trying to climb that ridge so modification time right that has now been modified so as you can see it's done at a slant so the penny can open fully let's see if it works because that is actually going to cause boost creep and uh, to cut it off is going to save us a whole lot of hassle it's a shame that it's got a little bit of a hole because it's actually met where the thread goes in but it should be fine i think it's plenty strong enough the other side of left as it's supposed to be anyway. All right guys, as usual, this turned into a bit more work than originally anticipated. So I shaved out that little bit and have a look. That's beautiful, flies open now. Yeah, but we had another problem, which wasn't just that alone. Okay, so if you look in there, can you see the shiny bit? There's a bit of casting there in the actual turbo housing, which is actually it's kind of getting in the way of the penny opening and closing properly. I don't know why that is. It must be from factory. This is a genuine Garrett Turbo. So something that might be worth checking if you're getting boost creep. And just to hone that out a little bit and make sure it's smooth. But anyway, let me show you the operation now. See how that flies up now. See before that bit of casting was sticking out and it was in the way. And now that works beautifully. That watery substance there is a bit of grease, a bit of uh, bicycle chain grease that I put in there. Uh, just because it was, it was all a bit dry in there. That will burn off anyway, I know it will, but I just wanted to make sure opening and closing nice now, which it is. So, perfect. Originally I used this uh, Dremel type tool that I've got, but the bit just kept slipping in there and it was bloody crap. So what I did was I used the trusty old cordless drill and I use this like sort of cone type sharpening bit if you like but it did the job for what I needed just got to show you don't need any fancy tools as long as you've got something that you can make work do it all right guys she's all back together now this time I didn't use the gasket at all I just used the sealant um, and it seems to be all right 
and what I've also done is I've wrapped this whole corner in anti-rattle tape so it doesn't rattle of course she's just back together now so here we can move on to other things now like injectors management but first we need to get the monitoring in so the AFR gauge needs to go in uh, boost gauge oil pressure gauge ah I've left that loose um, so yeah oil pressure gauge boost gauge AFR gauge and then ECU injectors and whoosh we'll be boosting all right guys i hope you enjoyed that video i uh, just wanted to let you know that the car is actually running on boost at the moment and it's bloody good <laughs> it's transformed the car i changed the spring on the actuator again uh, so it's running about 9.6 psi and it's bloody rapid but i need to change the clutch on it and a uh, few other bits and bobs that need tidying up not using a gasket wasn't a good idea so it actually started blowing with only sealant i took it all off cleaned it all up put the gasket back in put the sealant in and when i went to tighten it yep the uh, studs pulled out of the head but anyway i'm going to be putting some inserts into the head so i can put the studs back in i'll do another video on that so look out for that one uh clutch will be going in soon i don't know if i'm going to do that myself i might get my good friend to do it on the left do it quick um rather than doing it in the horrible weather outside and then uh, we are going to be rocking and rolling it's going to be very good i can uh, just imagine it now it's going to be brilliant anyway i hope you enjoyed that video guys if you did give it a thumbs up give it a like subscribe to my channel and uh, see lots of new juicy content i'll see you soon Bye for now.